I may not get all the good-looking guests that Matt DeSantis has, but I've got one thing over him. I've got Chalk Eater. Yeah. Trust the Prophets, it's the formula here. We're going to go through another Derby Prep, the Wood Memorial. Before we do, got tip sheets. If you want to find out more about them, hit the Join button. You've heard that story before. Let's get into it. Wood Memorial. We have horses entered as of today, April 8th, 2023, at Aqueduct. It's a G2 race, and they're going nine furlongs. That is one mile and an eighth. Moving ahead, dreamlike. Okay, Internet. If you can't give me a good picture of the horse... I'm going to pull stuff like this every single time. Dreamlike. Two races. It's a gun runner, time to tap combo course here. Has yet to break his maiden. Come in a close second twice at Gulfstream. Came within three, quarter, three quarters of a length behind Empire Strike fast. And um, before that, coming in second to Arthur's Ride. It is a Todd Pletcher horse. Getting the one hole. Jose Ortiz. Um... It's an option here. Obviously, a horse that has yet to break his maiden has yet to run at this level with this level of horses. So it would be an uphill challenge for Dreamlike. But if you like pedigrees, this could be your horse. Shadow Dragon, last out fifth at the Fountain of Youth, 14 lengths back of Forte. So, you know, the bloom fell off the rose there a little bit. Holy Bull came in second place, was a little bit higher in people's lists after that, being three quarters of a length behind Rocket Can. Rocket Can also starting to fall behind a little bit in terms of people's Kentucky Derby aspirations. Um, the Will Mott horse here, uh, maybe on the board. We'll see. Knox, one win, one second place, one third place lifetime. Last out a second place finish at Gulfstream in a 42K7 furlong race. Three lengths back of Loco Abario. Ran in three non-graded stakes races, hitting the board only once for third place. Hasn't won a race since breaking his maiden his first time out in June of 2022. It's a Safi horse shipping up to Aqueduct. I'm going to toss Knox. General Banker. So we got a horse here, 11 races, one win, three second places, three third places, third at the Gotham and third at the Wither. So lately, it's been hitting the board, not super high, but hitting the board nonetheless. Gotham came from eighth place back to secure a third place finish at the Withers, was behind, uh, well behind first and second, but moved up from sixth place to stay in the money, 11 lengths back, mind the spell check there. Um, out of nine races, or out of 11 races, two thirds of them were at Aqueduct, maybe a little bit more than that now. So this is a horse that's familiar with the horse, has done pretty well there, has already raced in a number of stakes races, a number of them being derby prep races. Pennington in the mount this time around, always a good price and always seems to finish in the money. Close to always. Slip Mahoney. One win and two ra uh, one win, two second place finishes in four races. Thank you. Second at the Gotham Stakes in that weird one, as we've mentioned before, horse or the race where uh, one of the top horses there lost his mount and uh, nobody really wanted to pass him. Previous to that, broke his maiden at Aqueduct in an 80k one mile race, beating Croupy by a head in the picture we've got right there you can see just by ahead how much that is the rest of the field 15 lengths behind so it was really a two-horse show there before that lost a tap at trice uh, by a neck in a one mile maiden special weight race obviously it was an early race for both of them but tap at trice has really moved up the rankings here in terms of derby prep races and in terms of uh, derby point scoring so this is a horse that uh has seen has seen some interesting has seen some good competition Brad Cox, Dylan Davis, the Jinx, as some of us trust the prophets call him. Um, Slip Mahoney, definitely consideration. Clear the air. Uh, four races, one win, came in fifth at the Gotham in a race where he was uh, came from pretty far back. Ch charged from behind, going from 10th to 5th in that race. Previously, he ran a couple races at Turfway, including a 50K AOC race going back and forth between near the pace to back of the pack, eventually coming in fourth. It's a horse that not sure what his running style is. Uh, starting up at the front, falling to the back, um, clear the air, going to have to see him run a clean race 
to fit, to understand what we got here with clear the air. Curious if someone else wants to chime in the comments and tell me I missed something on clear the air. Arctic arrogance, six races, hundred play, hundred percent win place finish, two second place finishes out of the last three times out. So second place to hit show five and a half lengths back. Hit show really did a number on that whole field there. Half a length back from Lugan Knight. Uh, going one mile in the Jerome Stakes. Sorry, that should be three second place finishes out of the last three times out. And then half a length back from WNL in the Remsen. Previous to that one, four lengths at the Sleepy Hollow. So this is a horse that's been in a lot of stakes races, a lot of good finishes. It would be, and he's really good at the distance. Let me also say that. He's run nine furlongs a number of times. So I think this is a horse that you really have to consider for that uh, for that one, two, three hitting the board at a show or place. Lord Miles. Yeah, once upon a time, Lord Miles is a horse that uh, I thought was going to be a strong closer, but moving ahead here, fifth place finish at the uh, Tampa Bay Derby, five and three lengths back. Didn't show much of a close, losing to Tappet Trice, classic car wash, classic legacy Prairie Hawk. You were hoping to see more of a dent made by Lord Miles there if he was going to be a true Derby contender, at least trying to hit that 20. Ran third place at the Mucho Macho Man, less than a length behind Dreaming of Kona and Legacy Isle. A couple other horses that we have since thrown by the wayside in terms of prepping for the Derby. In a sea of closers, he's falling back. Um, there's a lot of good closes out there. Lord Miles is not exactly meeting up to the level that some of those other ones are. Krupi has yet to win, but loves to place in the money. Found himself uh, in 14th, much of the race of the Risen Star. Rallied to finish 7th, 9.5 lengths behind Angel of Empire. Got off to a really slow start in that race. So the fact that he rallied, I think that maybe says something about him. Gives him a, gives a little bit of a, a bump if you're a Krupi fan. Um, hell of a race last time out before the Risen Star. Uh, pictured here with Slip Mahoney in a 80K maiden special weight race. Finishing neck and neck with him. Previous to that, two and a half lengths behind Classic Catch. So he's he's raced against some of these horses that we've been talking about for the Derby. He's a Todd Pletcher horse. Kendrick Karamuch is on the mount. So Krupi, even though he hasn't broken his maiden, deserving place in this race. Uncle Jake. One win in two races. Broke his maiden last time out at Laurel Park in a one-mile race. 53K maiden special weight race. Winning by nine and a half lengths. So an impressive win there, but it is Laurel Park. So we're talking about a horse that's gearing up for a derby prep race. You hope that you're going to have a dominant finish at Laurel Park. Previous to that, failed to break his maiden and failed to hit the board at Santa Anita in a maiden special weight race. Coming in fourth place, eight lengths behind uh, the group there. Um, interesting to note that in that race, he was a Bob Baffert horse and has recently, uh, transferred over to Brittany Wilt Russell's barn. She was the one who was training him when he broke his maiden at Laurel Park, stepping up in class significantly. Uncle Jake, former Baffert horse, looked good last race. Is it good enough to say that within this deep field at Aqueduct, he's going to make a dent? Remains to be seen. Classic catch, two wins, two third places in four races last time out. He won a nine furlong AOC race, two lengths over Mr. Ripple, horse that we just saw finish fourth place at the Florida Derby. Broke his maiden at Aqueduct going nine furlongs there. So distance, definitely favoring classic catch. Um, closing from fifth place to win by two and a half lengths. He's got that closers mentality followed up. Followed that one up at Tampa Bay where he ran uh, one mile and 40 yards, never completely closed, finished one length behind in that race. But again, what we've seen from him in nine furlongs, really liking classic catch here. Mr. Swagger, one win in two races. Last time out, six at the Gotham Stakes, pretty much stuck in sixth place the entire race for that broke his maiden in a six furlong race. Haven't seen enough tape on this horse. Don't know if he's up to the competition here. Race the distance to Gotham the one time. Hard to make any judgments off him. I just like some other horses better. It's, you know, hard to say that he's a bad horse, but I just don't see it with Mr. Swagger. Finally, we get to hit show, who is going to be at the very end starting in this race. Um, what you would expect to be the favorite in, in this race coming up here, the Wood Memorial, for a horse that's won three races in four attempts, including the Withers. 
um, by five lengths, you would expect this to be flat out favorite, but you know, starting in the 11th hole for a horse that's going to be closing, curious to see how that affects him. I don't think he's exactly the, well, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, yeah. So he won the withers nine for a long race, five and a half lengths winning there. Um, one in allowance race before that hundred K allowance race, three lengths beating invulnerable and protege had an eight and a half for a long race before that seven lengths behind was in the back of the pack. Most of the race managed to rally for fourth. This is a Brad Cox horse. I have to double check if I've got the jockey right. May not be Manny Franco, but it may be, it may be, um, hit show. Got to think that he's going to be the morning line favorite and probably the post time favorite as well, unless some people are diving in on a couple other horses out there. Who did I pick though? Safe pick. I still think it's hit show. Um, closing. I think he's got 11th position there, 11 horses in this race, if I counted correctly. I think he can still do it if he finds a, a clear nose out there for a value play. <sighs> Hard to say right now because I don't know what the morning line is and I don't know how the public's going to react, but I got to think that there's going to be some horses that are bet higher than classic catch, including hit show and probably slip Mahoney as well. I think those are just horses that yeah, I don't know. I, I, I could be completely wrong in that, but I'm going to say value play on classic catch. If I'm going to key box this, I will say that hit show is going to be my key because I think at least he will finish in the top three here. I like ca classic catch a lot. Slip Mahoney, I think you got to keep him in there. There's a number of horses that like to finish in the money, including Arctic Arrogance, but I'm going to go with General Banker here because I think there's a lot of value on him. He's run really well at Aqueduct, and I think... Um, Looking at Arctic Arrogance's last run out at um, the Withers or Gotham, finishing well behind Hit Show, I could see a few other horses squeezing in between. So there you have it. What do you guys think? What's going to happen at the Wood Memorial? Please hit the subscribe button and drop some comments below. Let me know how well I've done here in terms of my ranking. If I've done poorly, let me know that as well. Thank you very much.